This is Andy Perlwoff, Boxing Social in association with Betford. We're in Coventry of all places, Adam. And of all places. Of all places. Well, Andy, I was at university at Warwick five minutes away many, many years ago. And um, so I lived, um, I didn't live in Coventry actually, I lived in Leamington Spa, but uh, I, um, I finally graduated doing theatre and TV and not a very good degree, certainly not very I got two two. I don't know what you got. Probably a first. Um, and I graduated from the cathedral here, so there is a little bit of history. But I prefer to talk the boxing history here, which of course Dean Pithy, the late very good Richie Everett, and um, yeah Neil Simpson, who was there at the tournament show, good light heavyweight, um, very good um, breeding ground uh, for fights and fighters, Coventry. And it's great being back. It was good being back for the tournament show. And on Saturday night, it's a chance for the young guns to, uh, you know, to fly, we think, and get some peak time on Sky Sports. Adam Azim, Carrie Sartingstall, the tournament winners in, in Corey Gibbs and Dylan Shima. We're uh, very excited about it. And our old friend Sam Eggington back, the fearless warrior, to provide another classic 12-rounder. Can't wait. Let's just work through this card uh, briefly, Adam. Start from that main event, Eggington Zisk. What are your thoughts on that fight? What are you hoping to see from him? We know Sam's a very entertaining, fun-friendly fighter. Do you expect to see anything different from no, him? No, I don't. I love Sam Egg Eggington because, you know, it is what you get on the tin. He's, he's all action. He never lets us down. Win or lose, he's in some fabulous fights and I expect nothing less on Saturday night. Uh, yeah, he's the sort of nominal main event of this, of course. He's the most established fighter and, and rightfully so, the final fight of the night. But we're looking at the sort of peak times as well to really push our, our young crop who are, who are doing what Sam did a while ago, who are coming through. And we think it's really important that they get um, some very, very, uh, you know, big help from the Sky Arsenal and the Sky Platform. And that is Adam Azim really headlining for us in, in that sort of sweet slot and spot for the casual fans to be uh, to be really getting into. And Karis Hartingstall as well have a, a big sweet spot for Karis and for Lauren. I think they're going to be stars of the future. Karis uh, has her professional debut two weeks after Lauren's very successful one at Wembley. And Karis has got um, firepower. I mean, she's from the artillery, isn't she? She's a, a real character. I don't know how well you know Karis, but she's... Uh, a real personality. She's uh, she's got it all ahead of her, and I think she's going to entertain and thrill us from the opening bell of her first fight. And then you've got the tournament winners. So Dylan Chima and Corey Gibbs gets his long-awaited return. Very excited uh, about them and uh, and about the night ahead. Talk about Adam Azim, uh, Adam, because he's such a highly rated, highly talented young lightweight, and everybody's excited about him. I've spoke to Shane McGregor on and off camera, and he said he's one of the most exciting prospects he's ever worked with. How quickly do you want to see his career progress? Shane's going a further to me in private on that, saying that he's the best fighter he's ever had. And that is high, high praise indeed. If you look at the likes of my old friend David Hay and George Groves and Josh Taylor, Carl Frampton, Luke Campbell, Lawrence Acoli now, Daniel Dubois, I mean Caroline, all of that lot. Caroline, I think, is a special, special fighter, by the way. But Adam, he could have everything could have everything it's early days we've got to we've got to see him tested at different levels and at you know higher grade of opposition of course but so far so good for the very likable uh, young man from Slough whose brother Hassan and you know his his dad as well there's a great family there there's a great backing there's a lot of support and I think Adam he looks up to Amir he looks up to to Naz and Maybe he's got a little bit of both. He's very down to earth, but he's got the flamboyancy and the backflips that Nassim Hamad brought to the ring, that, that sheer box office entertainment. He's got mobility, he's got speed, he's got electricity, he's got something different at these workouts, he's got power. I like him. I like him a lot, Andy. Carrie Sarting still makes her longer awaited debut as well, Adam. You had Lauren Price a couple of weeks back, now you've got Carrie. What are you hope to see from her in a pro debut? Oh, I mean, I. I battled so hard and so long for these two I can't tell you I, I, I nagged Ben Shalom day and night to sign these two 
I think they are going to be the power couple, not just in boxing, but in sport, Andy. I think they are there for each other every step of the way. I think Lauren and Karis are both going to be world champions. Enjoy the journey. They are both charismatic. They're both so talented. They're very different. They're different in the ring. They're different out the ring. But it's a great story. And Rob McCracken guiding them from Sheffield. Fantastic. I asked Karis earlier and ask yourself, Adam, you've got Sky Nicholson granted with Eddie and Matt Troom, who's in the same way category. Do you think that's a fight we could see down the line? Of course it's a fight you can see. There's so many fights out there to be made. You know, boxing is is so good at the minute and the female code has been fantastic. Look where we are. We've had Katie and, uh, and, and Amanda Serrano over in, in New York, you know, banged out, epic encounter. You're going to have Savannah and Clarissa soon, I promise, in a few weeks' time in the autumn uh, on Sky and it's going to be incredibly big, that. Um, it's very, very exciting. Tasha Jonas finally becoming a world champion. Just brilliant times for the women. About time. Uh, Eddie's done a brilliant job. Um, so many people have done a brilliant job. And with Dimitri and Ben and Mark Taffet working so closely together to get this fight made, we've had the, uh, the joy of having Clarissa over, you know, stopping traffic in Cardiff. And then um, obviously back in Newcastle as well. There's the barbs, there's the electricity between the two, there's the history, the rivalry. What a fight. Are we going to have two, three of them, Andy? Bring it on. Just on Shields Marshal, Adam, I saw a report from Dan Raphael saying that the fight might be taking place in London. Can you confirm or deny if that's the case? It might be taking place in London, Andy. It might be. We will announce when we're ready to announce what we are doing with that fight. But believe you me, that is a night that is going to go down in history. So stand by for the announcement. Stand by for something pretty spectacular. And um, we're working a lot behind the scenes to make sure that, that we have a fantastic showcase for that fight because we believe it is a fight to elevate boxing even more. No, not just elevate female boxing, elevate boxing, full stop, and sport. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a pivotal night in our calendar in the autumn. Now, Adam, uh, a question which I'm sure you've been asked about quite a bit so far today, no, up at heavyweight. Surely um, not about Anthony. Yeah, that's for one. Anthony Joshua recently announced a long-term partnership with the Zoom. There's obviously a lot of talk as to where his broadcast allegiances would end up. Just get your thoughts on that announcement of their long-term partnership. What are my thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm almost talked out about how confident I was that Anthony would stay, how disappointed personally I am that he's obviously not going to be with Sky anymore. Um, professionally, it's a disappointment. Let's not hide behind that. It's AJ. AJ we've had since the beginning of his pro career. Um, it's been a fantastic partnership, a wonderful relationship. Um, but we pick ourselves up. Um, I'm in AJ's corner. We're in AJ's corner. We wish him all the luck in the world, all the success. Uh, obviously, he's got a massive rematch to focus on at the moment, um, and he moves over to to zone. Um, we'll always be behind him. He's always part of our history. Um, those huge nights we had with him at Wembley, at the Principality, out in Saudi, so many great, you know, nights. The ups, the downs in New York. Um, of course, he's part of us. Um, we adore AJ. Uh, my family adores AJ, and um, he'll always be. You know, very, very highly regarded by us. We also like Alexander Usyk, by the way. Let's not just talk about AJ because Alexander's been a really great fighter for Sky, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing that fight on August the 20th. We see the announcement, the big press conference in Saudi. I think there's one in London as well, and uh, you know, we don't know where it's going to land broadcast-wise at the moment. But um, ultimately, he's gone to the zone, and we wish him well. And uh, no fighter should be begrudged the money that's on the table for and the deals are on the table and they've got to look at them. AJ's no exception and whatever level you're at, it's a short window. Fighters Andy are everything to us. We would not be doing this without the brave men and women that get in that ring. So to begrudge them any offer, any future, you can't. We've had a great time with AJ. 
it's come to an end, maybe. Maybe it's temporary, maybe it's full term, maybe things will change down the road, who knows? But he's with the zone now and we wish him well. And I wish the guys at the zone well with him because he's a great fighter, he's a great ambassador. And, um, you know, he's going to bring them a lot of success, I'm sure. We've got to look at who are the next box office stars. We've got to build this future, which is why, in many ways, we're we're looking at this next gen that we've really got hold of, the young, the best talent, and we're looking to really showcase them, really get behind them, and hopefully build stars for the future. But yeah, good luck to AJ. In the build up to the decision that he made, Adam, you mentioned kind of how loyal AJ has been throughout his career. So, was it bitterly disappointing for you that he didn't stick with you? As I've said, as I've said to you, it's. Uh, you know, he's shown a lot of loyalty over many years and, and I, I admire him for that. Would I have loved him to stay at Sky? Of course. Would the team have? Of course. Would the business have? Of course. It hasn't happened. He's chosen another route. And all I'll say is don't, don't begrudge fighters making big money. And if that's what turned him or whether it was Eddie and whether it was Matchroom and the fact that they've all gone to the zone, maybe that's part of it. Um, 258 still have got a big part with us, so we've got Ben Whitaker, we've got Fraser Clark and Shannon Ryan, so there's going to be many times we're going to work with AJ, and one of the things him and, and, and Benger and you know, KD and all, all our friends have been saying is, you know, let's build the next AJ, so you know, sometimes fighters have got to look at what stage there are of their career and make decisions that are right for them. We've seen it before, we'll see it again. Sky aren't going anywhere. We've got an amazing platform and we build for the future. Final thing on it, I just want to get your thoughts on Adam, is the deal which was proposed to AJ Vass come out. So he's been offered shares, he's become a shareholder now of DAZN. He's a special advisor, a brand ambassador for the business. Just kind of get your thoughts on everything which was proposed well, I'm, to AJ. I'm sure they, they had to do all of that to make sure that you know he didn't stay on Sky. Um, he was an ambassador for us and I don't know any of the details of that. I'm just sure that it's got to be, you know, hopefully for AJ the right deal for him. I, as I said, we're disappointed obviously at Sky and uh, we'd have loved to have continued to the end of his career. But, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't always work like that boxing and uh, fighters have to do what's right for them. And you have to ask DAZN and, and AJ's team, 258, you know, what made him sign with them. But ultimately, he has. And we look our wounds and we come again. But as I said, we are and will always be behind Anthony Joshua. We have a great working relationship with Freddie, with Andy Bell. They're, they're friends of ours, just like Frank and Eddie. And, you know, we've worked together a long, long time in all of this. Just because you know, I work with Ben Shalom now and Todd DeBerth and we've got new relationships and growing relationships and flourishing relationships and fantastic times ahead doesn't mean that we didn't have good times before and maybe we won't have good times again with the same people it's a uh, small business as you know and you and I know that we wouldn't be doing any of this without the uh, the fighters and the fighters have to make the hard decisions and I for one respect the decisions they make because they're the ones that get into the ring not us moving away from that Adam and on to sticking with heavyweight division rather Joseph Parker signing just talk to me about that move and also has that put pay to any chance of seeing that Joe Joyce fight which was previously spoken? Never puts pay to anything Andy as you well know. I'd love Joe Joyce and Joe Parker to fight. I'm really pleased about this. Um, when Ben came to me and said you know Joe Parker I was like really excited. I really like him. He's a gentleman. He's a solid heavyweight. He's probably in He's paid his dues in the UK and, and people love him without actually sort of getting that A-side love. And now we can get behind Joe and, and give him that. And we can work with him and, uh, and David and the whole team and Andy Lee and his, obviously he works with Tyson. And I really like Joe. He's, um, as I said, he's, he's a great asset. AJ was a fantastic ambassador for Sky. I think Joe's going to be a really good ambassador because he's a funny guy, he's a good guy, he's almost like an adopted Brit. He's very popular in New Zealand, obviously. And he's still young, he's still got time to come again. He's in good form. He'll fight anybody, whether it's Joe Joyce, whether it's Dillian White, whether it's Deontay Wilder, whether it's AJ again, you know, he'll fight anyone. Probably won't fight Tyson because they're, they're, great, they're great buddies, aren't they? But he talked to Tyson and Andy about Joe Parker. Um, I'm close to Joe, I've got a good relationship with him, I'm very pleased he's on Sky and we'll be doing everything we can to get behind him, put him in really good fights and give him some Sky love. 
Huey Fury, Michael Hunter no longer taking place on July 2nd. That adds a it motion. will take place. It won't take place on July the 2nd, but it will. It's just been postponed. It's a great fight. Um, Huey wasn't ready. He was injured. Um, and he'll go again with Michael. And we look forward to that. It's an eliminator for Daniel Dubois' title. Very, very good performance from Daniel away uh, in Miami recently. Delighted for him. Obviously, Caroline's brother, and they're very close. So, very good news. Frank Warren's had a great year, hasn't he, with Tyson Fury and Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. Maybe we should get together with Frank and try and make the Joyce Parker fight. Um, look, it's uh, it's good times, isn't it? Not just the zone we're talking about, who have uh, obviously had Eddie and a, a great number of fighters join them, but Frank's done brilliantly on BT as well. Uh, the Wasserman team now on Channel 5, they had a show the other week. And um, you know, Ben Shalom going from strength to strength. You add Top Rank and PBC and everyone else around the world. We love what Top Rank are doing, giving us another great performance from Artem Aturbiev on the weekend. We're loving our relationship with Top Rank and um, we love what we're doing with boxers. So a uh, lot of competition, a lot of opportunity to fighters and some great times for fans who can tune in and watch boxing everywhere. But Saturday night, you'll be tuning into Sky Andy, won't you? Because the young guns are coming. Just a couple more quick ones from me, Adam. On that July 2nd, Ben Whitaker was due to make his debut. When you're hoping to see that one take place now, when you're hoping to see him in the ring for the first time? I need to talk to Ben, but hopefully get Ben out in July with a bit of luck. Um, I don't want to hold Ben back to, he's itching. He's itching. Uh, he doesn't mind waiting two or three weeks, but he wants to get out there and uh, and get going. And uh, that's going to be something special. That's going to be uh, that's going to be one ride, the Ben Whitaker journey. Enjoy it. And Tommy Fury this morning has put a video out saying that he signed his end to the fight with Jake Paul. Let's get your thoughts, Adam, Tommy Fury and Jake Never mind that. I need Tommy Fury to do a video for me, not for me, for my daughter, who turns 16 on Saturday. I'm going to be with her for breakfast, and then I'm going to be hot-footing it up here. But she's a massive Tommy Fury fan. So I need, I need Ben to work his magic and get a video for Tommy. Tommy's watching this. Tommy, do a video for Jess and me. She'd love that. Um, Tommy Fury's a great guy. I worked with him a little bit on the... Um, on the uh, on the night at Wembley, um, yeah, great. Let's see the fight. Him and Jake Paul. Can't wait for it. Well, Adam, I think you've got to go shoot off and do your job now. Thank you. No problem at all. Then.